Great. So thank you for coming on. We're rolling. This is the intro. Give us an introduction of yourself, how you got started, what you do, and other than that, that's it. Yeah, great. So my name is Alex Fernandez, and I help creators and brands build successful YouTube channels. I've got my start over 10 years ago working at an MCN called Machinima, the biggest gaming multi-channel network at the time, and then just bounced around making my own YouTube channels here and there, uh, and MCNs and all that other stuff. So basically behind the scenes a lot, but on screen as well. I've started and launched over 13, 14 channels. Most have failed. So it's a lot of trial and error, right? So you learn with the gusto. And then I took all that knowledge and applied it to creators and brands today. And so far, so good. It's pretty successful. It's a pandemic kind of business, right? It started because of the pandemic hit America. And I was like, well, let's do something different. Let's see if we can take these skills. People are more open to remote work and using agencies and outsourcing and delegating. So I was like, sweet, this is going to be fun. And fast forward now, I have a nice handful of creators and brands that I work with today and always trying to expand the, all that, right? So anything with YouTube related, when it comes to content strategy, audience development, managing the channel, optimization, all those fancy buzzwords. That's what I do here in the United States. We have clients in America and in the UK. So that's pretty cool as well. So we're working uh, pretty global right now, trying to get a sleep schedule, all coordinated Curie, as you know, the time changes and different things like that. And I'm on the West coast, LA. So got to try to balance everything out, but it's been a fun ride, man. I can't complain. It's uh, and I'm blessed. Yeah. I think about this every single day that I'm also blessed because I don't know, I really enjoy what I'm doing and this is so much fun. This is so cool. The only thing I don't like is the negotiation part. I hate it. I don't like conflict, man. But it's yeah. freaking important to negotiate or do this stuff. Yeah, sales is the is the thing, right? It's like, I don't really like selling as much. You know what I'm saying? I just wish everything was just so smooth. Like, here, tra- put, send the Stripe invoice over and let's get it popping. But it is what it is. That's part of business. That's part of, especially when you're dealing with bigger level brands. It's because they're so used to just kind of work in the middle and they have budgets and things like that. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's all part of the, it's all part of the game, right? Yep. The, the two things that I don't like the most with running a business right now is like negotiations and talking with my accountant. I hate it. I don't like it. Like what am I supposed to do with, like, I don't care. Just pay the people and let's continue. Like, this is fun. I don't like talking about numbers. They, it, it, I would like to talk about numbers if it was something I hate and I was doing it for money. Yeah, right. But a, a good accountant is very handy. So you, you can't you can't beat a good accountant, especially as business as your business is growing, as your YouTube channel is growing, anything really, right? Because you need that person to come in and save the day. In America, you know, it's a they they favor businesses and good taxes and all that other stuff, right? So you kind of have to be on, on top of it over here. But I agree. I mean, for me, it's my biggest issue when it comes is scaling in terms of, and getting the systems down. Right. So that's my biggest challenge is sometimes it's like, okay, can I hire this person? And then I got to make sure that they can actually run what I need them to run and they go back and forth. And then sometimes you can make, give people the most perfect system, nice Google doc checklists, checkpoints, uh, reference videos. And sometimes they still can't do it. Right. So it's just, it's a very, uh, it's a very interesting world, but yeah, that's my, that's my biggest issue right now is, Obviously not issue, challenge, right? It's finding good people, training them and, and letting them go do their thing, right? Yeah, I, I don't get it. Like sometimes there are some simple tasks that people can't seem to do. And then it frustrates me and then I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it on my own. I know, I know. For the people out there who are judging me, like let them do their job or you're suck at it and you're not a good, not a good leader or you're not hiring the, the right people. That's true but it not, does not give the excuse not to follow simple ex- in instructions. Yeah, but Kiri, that's the issue, right? It's like we're, we're, I hate to say like the Kanye West kind of thing, like we're experts, but it's just a matter of we have to give them a break, right? It's like we know we can do it two, three, four, five times faster probably, right? And we don't have to think about it as much, blah, 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 right? It's just a matter of, well, that's not the point. The point is to have other people so you can maximize your time focus on other stuff. Right. And you know, it's going to get done. And with time, you hope they get more efficient and they get better. Right. But we all know that like we've been done, we've been doing it for a long time. We can do it way faster, more efficient. Don't have to look at a checklist. 
then I have to second check everything, right? Or go down the list. It's just that that's, that's the thing I've had to let go as well. It's like, all right, nobody operates. I won't say nobody. Most people aren't going to operate at the level that we operate at, right? Whether it comes to creating things, having the eye for things, looking at analytics, giving content strategy, right? So you just got to take the, you got to take the good with the bad sometimes and just be, be really patient. I mean, patience has been something that's really grown on me this last year and a half. So, uh, yeah. So did you figure out a, so I like on my podcast, I like to going deep and into detail. So have you figured out like the secret formula of YouTube and how to go viral and like tips and tricks that people can use and all of this stuff? Yeah, it's, um, you know, I, that sounds like really nice, but we all know that it, it's, it's more than that on YouTube, right? Kiri, like I've made a free ebook, free guide that I got to drop this week. So people can download that and get into my email newsletter and all that fancy jazz, right? My, my, my freebie. So people can go in there and then if they want to get consultation and more hands-on stuff, they can do that. Uh, but we all know what really matters, right? Volume, especially in the beginning, right? And, and I'll, I'll run down, I'll run down my list right now. Step one is record content, just create and record content, right? Your first 20, 30, 40 videos, they're not going to be the best. If you go to every creator that you've loved and watched for years, go back to their first like 10, 20 videos. You'd be like, that's not even the same person. The audio isn't there, the video quality isn't, the ideas, right? So you just got to get out. As a, I'm talking as a creator, right? Right. As a person who's like, I just want to have a YouTube channel. I want to hit a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time ASAP. I want to monetize, blah, blah, blah. Put out content because you're so new in the game. You don't really know what your avatar is, what your audience is, right? You got to just put out content. First and foremost, that way you at least have some data to look at in your analytics and your YouTube studio, and you can at least make some adjustments, right? But step one, let's not overwhelm people. I'm good at that sometimes, just overwhelming people in consultation. Step one is record content. You have an iPhone, you can get some stuff on Amazon. If you want to level up and get a Sony A7 and a boom mic and all that other stuff, you don't need that right now. Go out there and create content. That's the most important thing. And then I would say research ideas in your niche. Look at three to five people that you really admire. What are they doing? Look at trends in your niche, right? Focus on the thumbnails and the titles. And that's a really good start. Those are three things right there that you should really focus on. Create the content, focus on thumbnails and titles, and really look at what's popping in your niche. Because if you look at a lot of people, how they grow so quick, they're name jacking Mr. Beast. They're seeing what's trends on the, on, and their kind of niche, right? And their vertical, what's going on and whether it's gaming, food, finance, whatever, they're like small fish on a whale kind of situation a lot. So trend jacking may not be the right word to be trend spotting is a little better. So always look for that and just use what other creators are doing. Well, like you like to watch this person, what do you like from their videos? Right. And that gets a little more in depth, right? You're getting more into editing and looking at retention points and things like that. But that would be my real basic advice for somebody who's zero, zero right now. Just created their channel. Just put their net. They don't even have a banner yet, right? They, don't, they just have a profile picture and they're just trying to figure out what do I do, right? Don't get in the weeds so much about optimizing the channel, getting all this stuff. I would say just get the content out and then you'll just learn as you go and you'll eventually get there with all the little, you know, tightening of the screws and things like that. Yep. Agreed. So can we go more into detail? For example, for the, um, for YouTube shorts, the thing that I have figured out, I think, is that for the average percentage viewed metrics, let's say, for the 35 second video, I guess like a 90% average percentage viewed is a, is a very good, very, very, very good metric for you to go viral. And then it goes up to 50 to 55 second short and you need around 87.5 to 85% average percentage you viewed to get your video go viral. However, for the click-through rate for the shorts and for the long-form videos, for especially for the long-form videos, I just know that Mr. Beast said that 10 to 15% click-through rate and 70% average percentage viewed, but he did not mention the length of the video and how this continues as a podcast uh, click-through uh, click -through rate for shorts and any other metrics that you may have in mind. Yeah, I mean, shorts is the new beast on the block, right? And I just had a call last week with one of the global content strategists at Google who is responsible for the shorts. And they were saying in a perfect world, 
short form and long form live on the same channel. They want everybody to be hybrid creators and just work on what you were saying, right? High 90s, 100 plus percent, because I have a creator I work with and he's getting over 100% average view duration. I don't know how that works. Maybe just people are letting it play through. Um, but yeah, like you said, that's what Mr. Beast wants in terms of uh, long form video. We don't know if it means eight to 12 minute videos, four minute videos, because obviously that changes, right? I watched it, a presentation by Todd Bopri. He he basically builds the YouTube out. His team runs the algorithm on YouTube. And he was breaking it down on what, like, how to get into the top 10, 1%, things like that. But what you're saying is right. And obviously, the longer the video, the more they're not going to stay on. In terms of a podcast, you may get away with it because people are just played in the background, right? They may just have a tab open and just doing whatever on their computer. But those are great benchmarks to reach for. That'll obviously put you in the 1% of content, right? 70% all the way through, you know, because we all know 30% of people are going to drop off in seven to 30 seconds, right? Like, it doesn't matter how great you have it. You're not going to have 100% all the way through 30 seconds. People will click off. They see something bright and shiny. They have to go run and do homework, whatever, right? But so 70% is great. And you want to at least keep 30, 40% till the end, right? Because then that's like on a, on a, on a good average to at least get your video recommended. Right, because that's really where the big traffic is, right? Like your core audience is going to help you push it, but you want to get your videos pushed into the recommended browse features, things like that, right? So you really want to just focus on that stuff. Obviously, 70 is great, and that's a little more advanced, right? Because you're looking at your metrics, you're looking at your drop-off points, you're looking at what spikes your videos, and then you really just have to play with it. And like YouTube is its own beast, as you know, Kiri, like the viewer likes non-stop no gaps like boom 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 let's keep it going i would say front load your video right don't save all your good stuff to the end if you have an eight minute video and all the good stuff is after five minutes well people are going to drop off right at least use some teases some hooks try to mix it up and figure it out but retention is uh is key right we look at click through rate is number one probably what they would say and retention and i would say likes as well like that's really going to help drive your videos like engagement engagement is, is massive Right. So it, I know they took away the dislike button um, and things like that. So, uh, yeah, you just got to focus on likes, what your audience likes, build your community up too. like, yeah, I know we're going off on a tangent a little bit, but we're focusing on shorts and long form. Yeah. Shorts is the new, and they're going to push shorts. Like if you're using, actually using shorts, YouTube will push that, will push that into the feed. Um, it's a complete, as you know, cause you're, you work with channels that have shorts and long form, right? two completely different traffic sources, right? So one more, more shorts basically come from the shorts feed, right? If you look at most of it, it comes from the specific shorts feed. Long form comes from everything else, right? Depending on your channel, whether it's external browse features, YouTube search, and you can use them for discoverability mostly. Shorts are basically right now a big discoverability tool. Okay, interesting. So what I was gonna say, short form, I was gonna say for the short form, long form, Click through rates. Have you noticed anything about click through rates for shorts and long form videos? Yeah, I noticed like what you were saying, right? Like anything, I noticed that one of my creators, anything in the 70% range doesn't go off, right? It doesn't really pop off. It doesn't get that virality. You got to really hit the 90s and the 100% plus to really get like traction. For example, one of my creators has a video that has 8 million views basically on shorts, right? And that was because it had a good click-through rate, like you were saying, 10, 15%, and triple-digit uh, view duration, right? Which means people sat there and watched it again, at least. So that's really what you want to get. Can you get them to watch it twice? Can you play? And obviously they say, what, 7 to 21 seconds is the sweet spot, give or take, is what they were saying. This is what I was told by a person at Google. Nah, it's like, I don't agree. Because the goal is to get people to watch repeatedly, right? So... It's just a matter of algorithm hacking a little bit so you can play with the numbers. Because if you make a seven second video and it's over the top and people watch it twice, you're getting closer to 200%, right? Like you're just, now you're just playing with numbers at that point, not really engagement or things like that or views, right? So, uh, and that's what TikTok was saying for the longest time, make it short, make it sweet. But it's just a matter, if your video takes 35 seconds, it takes 35 seconds. If it takes 60 seconds, make it 60 seconds. And then if you're a creator who's using both and is struggling, to get a long form audience, right? If you're crushing it in shorts and then you make an eight minute video and nobody watches it, well, that's an issue, right? Big tip, make your long form videos two minutes to start out with, right? You have to really 
nurture. I know the monetization isn't there, whatever. You can't play multiple ads, but you have to cater to that audience. You have to nurture that subscriber and that viewer, right? Especially if you want return viewers from shorts to, to go to the long form. You're not, it's very difficult to have somebody who's so used to watching a 30 to 60 second video and then having them commit to an eight minute video, right? So if you can at least get them going into two, then two and a half, then three and four, you can you can grow that subscriber base to get used to watching you in the long form content. Okay. So let's say someone has a hundred thousand subscribers only through growing it with shorts. And then they start putting out banger videos, um, long form videos, like let's say 10 minute videos. I yeah. know it's un like, um, will their audience be notified for the long form videos? If they're subscribers, they should be, right? Because everything is notified in the feed. Oh. However, most people, this is from what I understand, it's like a lot of people from the short form or love short form are going to give you that much attention in the beginning, right? But once again, and this is a this is maybe controversial, I, I believe a lot of short form creators don't know how to make good long form videos. It's because it's a completely different beast, right? They, they just used to like, blah, 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 boom, 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 right? And then in terms of long form, it's like, we really got to focus on good thumbnail, good title, good retention, getting people to stick. And that's really an art, making good long form videos. I just suggest getting people to slowly ramp it up. And a lot of, that's a lot of shorts creators have having a lot of success with that. Now, if you're a creator who's a hybrid, who's been putting up eight minute videos beforehand and it gets traffic and you have shorts, that's one thing. I'm talking about a person who's just starting out or has mainly built their audience through shorts. Okay. So shorts and long form, 10 to 15% click through rate, correct? Yeah, I would even say even more. Let me look at let me look at a uh, really? look at one of my studio here. I'll just look into the analytics. Can you are you allowed to share your analytics there? Uh, not with this guy now. Okay, uh, I have allowed you to share your screen in case you want. We want to take it more visual and give people a more visual representation. Let me see, because I don't have his permission to show his analytics either. You know what I'm saying? So we have to we have to wait and see. Yeah, this is why. Like. Go. Let me go to his I know. Popular, I'm going to go to his most popular short and I'll just read them off to you. Um, so this short has, oh, wow. So he has two videos that are almost at 10 million, right? Mm -hmm. So let's just see how he got 10 million views in shorts. We go to reach. So a ton of traffic in the shorts feed. He has a 7% click through rate. But in the beginning, if we look at the first 24 hours, to three days, right? Which really involves the push, right? You're looking at 12 and a half percent, right? Which is basically what you were, it splits right in the middle of what you were saying, 10 to 15, 12 and a half percent, right? Shot out of a cannon. But as you know, shorts pick up, they get traffic in all sorts of different times, right? Random. That's, that's, really, that's really the ideal, double digit click through rate, right? And if I can go to the engagement here, 91%. Um, and that's over the entire 9 million views. Now, it was a little higher in the beginning, right? But as you get exposed to more people, you go into that thing. I know his video at one point had over 100% average view duration. So, so how long can, is the video? His video is 40 seconds now. This video is 40 seconds, has 91% views. So 36 seconds. Wow. Right? That's so you're good. aiming for what you were saying. You want 90s. 70s, those videos... Barely get a million. If they can, a million, maybe, not even, maybe just more than six figures, right? You want to look at your shorts, aim for 80, 90, 100%. If you can get over 100% in the first 24 hours, then you know you're on the right track for something, right? But you really want 90%. Like, that's ideal, right? 80 to 90% and then seeing, like, what really worked? How can I keep people to stay? Let me look at one more video. That's only 21 seconds now, Kiri. Let's look at this. Um, reach. Seconds. Okay. 21 seconds. If I look at the click through rate, this one is at four, was at 14% and then 13% wow. in the first two days. And then it kind of leveled back out and then it claimed back up into the nine, 10% range. So that's what you're really looking at. And obviously more than 90% of the traffic is from the shorts feed, right? 5% is from search and channel pages and things like that. This video has 1.9 million views, 9.1 million views rather. Um, 8.1 of the views were unique viewers, which is good. 3 million was returning viewers. If you look at the duration, this was at 95%. This is for long form or short form? This is a short form video. And this returning viewers? Correct. Wow. 
Okay, that's that's very unusual in my perspective. Like my Absolutely. most of the clients. 98% is like short speed. Yeah, absolutely. So, and this one has a, this is a 21 second video with a 95% average percentage view. On how many views? Uh, and so that's basically 19 seconds. People stay around 19 of the 21 seconds. Uh, how many views? It has 9.6 million. Okay. Okay. Yes. But I think that 25 seconds for shorts, it's, the lowest that you can go, like you shouldn't go for 20, 15, 10 seconds. What do you think? I think it's different for everybody. If you're a, if you're a content creator, that's the sweet spot. I would actually agree with you less than 30. Um, whereas like, what are you really going to put out value wise in seven seconds? Unless it's more like one of those, like super short TikTok style videos, where you are using a lot of text, using background music, and you're kind of just doing your thing in the video. Right. Um, 25, 20 to 25 seconds is, seems to be the sweet spot. I'm going to look at one more video of his most popular one. So I'm going to run down the list for you of his, all the videos that have more than 5 million views. And I'll tell you the durations right now. 40 seconds, obviously 21, 14, 15, 15, 13, 15, 12, 15, 15, 12. And, and what is this? Those are videos that have more than 5 million views. This is a click-through rate. No, these are this. That's the length of the video. Just to give oh, you an so idea, it's it's like not, it's lower than thirty seconds. Yeah. So wow. on average, okay. if it's video, his videos that are less than thirty seconds. Now, obviously, there's some, there's some videos that are fifteen to thirty seconds that don't have a ton of views, right? So if I go to some of his lowest viewed stuff, I go here. There are videos that are nineteen seconds. That are videos that are a minute and a half. You know, it just varies. So that, that's when you get into the intricacies of the videos and trying to figure out, okay, what really works. Also, it can be topical. It could be things like that. Like there's video, there's a video here that has 29,000 views and it only has, it's, it's 30 seconds, right? Or this one's 15 seconds and it only has 50,000 views. Okay, so, so for the low figure views, can you tell us the click-through rate and the average percentage viewed? Let's do it. So I'll just take a video that is 87,000, which is considered low, right? That's still good for a lot of people, but for a person who's pulling millions, right? So what went wrong? This video is 11 seconds. Let's see the reach on it. So less impressions. Click through rate was still in the 9% range. The view duration was 112%. So where's the, where, where's the fire, right? Like now we need to figure out like, what is YouTube telling me? And I have another call with them. Like, what are you telling me? This video has 113% average percentage viewed, but it has nowhere near the views. And if we look at the traffic sources on this, if I look at reach, it was, it's actually has more in the channel pages. So it really just didn't pop off in the shorts feed, which is very interesting, right? So what do, what do we have to do as strategists, experts, coaches? What do we have to do to make sure the video pops in the shorts feed? That's what's more important right now than because if you're not getting the traffic from the shorts feed, then it's really not going to go viral, right? If we look at the, the theme seems to be, okay, the most of the traffic comes from browse features and channel pages on a short means it's not going to pop off, right? So the, the real key is, um, the real, sorry, I just got an email from a, from an accountant. It's funny that you say that. Um, that's the real key, right? When it comes to short, how do we attack the shorts feed? That's more important. Whereas long form is the opposite. Yeah. So I was working with someone who was only posting long form videos. Like, yeah, he was, I cannot say much details. He was, they were only posting long form videos. And then we started posting short form videos with them. And their shorts, the shorts were doing, they, they were doing pretty well, but they were getting views from the channel from the, what is it called? Channel, from the subscribers and the channel thing, stuff. And they, were, they weren't getting anything from the shorts. But over time, after like two to three weeks, some of them that had like the good metrics, like click through rate and average percentage viewed, that started popping off in the shorts feed. So for the people who have long, long form content and they're starting out for, with short form content, then it's okay to experience right metrics, but no views. Just be patient okay. a little bit. And th this is very interesting to me that we're speaking about metrics and not like time to post. 
hashtags used in the title. I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't know if your clients are using um, hashtags in the titles. Yeah. We're not. And mm -hmm. we're doing, and we're continuing, like, we still have, like, huge success with it. Huge, huge, huge success. But I think we should more, we should be more focused on the metrics rather than like shorts in the description and shorts in the title. Yeah, I mean, good content's always gonna win at the end of the day, right? And the hashtags do, I mean, because that was the thing in the beginning, you had to put it, the shorts tags for it to pop up in the feed. Now, Google, YouTube have the algorithm to tell, hey, this is a vertical format, it's less than 60 seconds, we're automatically gonna just put it in the shorts. Um, and like you said, you may not get the pop from shorts right away if you're a long form creator. Like I have another creator who has 700,000 subscribers who's built an audience basically on long form eight to 12 minute videos. And we put up a short and it gets 15,000 views. And she's like, what the F what's going on? I'm like, we're just experimenting. It's a different feed. It's different discoverability. Right. It, and, and YouTube wants them to live in once live in one place. Right. Where it's just, it's, and I, I find a little, um, I don't know if disagreement is the right word. I think it's just tough sometimes. Like I wish they had a separate shorts tab. I know Colin and Samir have talked about this where it's more just like, I just want to see shorts. Boom. That's the tab on the channel. Wham. I want to just see long form. Wham. Um, but they really want them to live side by side. The hybrid model is what they call it. They want everybody to be hybrid because like we talked about two different style of metrics, two different target audiences, two different things to look at. Um, and they want to just, uh, they really just want to work on it. But like you said, good content's always going to win. It doesn't matter if you have the most perfect hashtags, the right description, the chance you got to have good content because the audience has to enjoy the content, right? Now we can do all these bells and whistles, right? We can, what I like to say, we don't promise overnight success, but we can cut the learning curve, right? You know, what, what is it on average? It takes 164 videos to get a thousand subscribers, right? Give or take sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on your niche. The average person takes what two or three years to get to monetization. We can help cut that learning. Like those things are what we really, we really help at, right? It's like cutting that curb. But at the end of the day, you got to really focus on good content, great thumbnails, great topics, right? You can have the best video in the world, but if it's a shitty thumbnail, sorry, my French, if it's a shitty thumbnail or a topic nobody cares about or nobody's looking for, or nobody's mm -hmm. really, then it doesn't matter how great your underwater basket weaving video is right? You have to find a way to make that relevant to an audience, whether it's the YouTube search, things like that. And as you can see, search is, is really, is really huge, right? Because Google now prioritizes YouTube videos in their Google search. So you really just have to work on all those, all those type of things like topics, video ideas. Those are massive, right? Like all my clients really just look at video ideas and topic research is more important, right? That's because people don't want to waste time and make a video budget, whatever it is, time, energy, resources, and it's going to tank because it wasn't a good video. It wasn't a pop and thumbnail. It's just people don't really care about what you were talking about that day or for that video, right? But then you got to flip it and say, hey, you know what? It could be evergreen. Let's find a way to just, you know, work with the title, see what we can do. Or you just take an L, right? Not every video is going to be white hot, a banger, viral, high engagement, right? There's always going to be a videos here and there that aren't going to pop. It is what it is. You go back to the drawing board and see what happened. Okay, cool. We did everything in the retention wise. We go back to video research. I'm probably just going on a tangent. I know you have something very smart to say. No, no, I, I, I like, I like this discussion the way we go deep and we analyze this analytics and um, analyze every topic that we speak about because over, over generalizing advice is worthless, worthless advice because you don't know the context. You, do, you don't know anything about it. I could just yeah. say to you, make good content, define good content. Right. Good click through rate and good average percentage viewed. So back, so back to your point. Can you share your screen and go to your YouTube channel and we can speak about more specifics of what you think like uh, good thumbnails look like, good titles look like. Maybe we can do that and we can judge people's content in your recommended feed or something. Can we do that? Let me see what I can do here. But yeah, like you're saying, like that's where all the freebies are for, right? We have a short channel or a TikTok or like I'm launching my platform, like those like 30 second videos of like, not over generalized, but like just enough kind of thing, right? And if you want to book a consultation or have us just do it for you, then that's where we'll get really in the weeds, right? But for the most people, most people just need kind of just a kick in the ass a little bit to just kind of get going, right? Because they'll just overthink everything. 
let me see if I can share something here uh, on what's a good thumbnail. Hmm. Who makes really good thumbnails? Let's just go to like, let's just pick a YouTuber who's crushing it. Yeah, I think we can just go on your YouTube recommended stuff. Um, Perfect. Like this. Let, me let, me... Share my, let me share my screen. Okay. If not, I can share my screen. No problem. So let me see here if I, what do you guys, you guys see my, uh, my screen here? Yep. Great. So can you, can you zoom in a little bit? Yeah. One sec. Let me go here to Chrome. Uh, view. You were there. Yeah. Here. Cool. Very cool. How's that look? Huh? Okay. Better. One more. One more. Yeah. So one more notch. How about that? Great. Okay. Perfect. So as, so there's a whole bunch of different type of thumbnails, right? So for example, Pat McAfee, he's a sports mm -hmm. commentator, right? He has over 2 million on, uh, he's the biggest sports podcast on YouTube, right? And he has a deal with Spotify. He's got a deal with DraftKings. I don't know if you know what DraftKings is over there. DraftKings is one of the biggest sports betting platforms in the world or in the United States, really. Americans love to gamble on sports. So it goes hand in hand. What did he do? He took a lot of inspiration from what's the biggest show, Joe Rogan Experience, right? The green around box, the face reaction. So that's a real, for that niche, it's going to hit, right? So it's like, it's relative to something else, right? I don't, I'm not a big fan of saying the same text on the title. I feel that you should mix them up or keep it a little shorter. But once again, it works for him. Splits are really popular. Here's Joe Rogan right here doing the same kind of thing. Um, for example, this cooking person who I work with is homemade but professional, right? I think the biggest thing is that you have to know what your audience likes, right? If you have an audience that's 35 and older, highly female, and you try to make an over-the-top, high contrast, big fit, they're going to be like, this doesn't speak to me, right? So you have to find out what your audience likes and just play with it. So whether it's how do you, how do you spark emotion, right? Do you spark emotion with negativity? Do you do big text like Tom Bilial, right? Where it's like, whoa, that's a real interesting point. What do you mean about starve yourself, right? So what is it, what is it going to be? Is there a big ask how I lost a thousand pounds and, or I lost a hundred kilograms in three months, right? Like what is the real, what, what's the story in the thumbnail? Are you going to use negativity? Are you going to do a big ask? Are you going to use curiosity, which is probably the biggest thing? How do I make somebody curious? This is a podcast as well. And they have all the features, right? Piggyback on big names and celebrities who are going to show up. If we look at Ben Echo, big text, very simple, but lots of contrast, right? Showing the abs, that makes sense for a fitness guy, right? Like, oh, that guy is yoked, right? I want to get into that kind of shape, right? Um, munchies, food people just have faces. I would always recommend somebody to have a face. I don't know how you feel about that, Kiri. Uh, people love human trust. They want to see a reaction. You know, those YouTube faces, ah, like that, that actually works. That's why you see people doing that uh, remote control of your screen. What does this mean? Yeah, so I want to control your screen so I can show the audience something. Proom. It, it is approved. Uh, it I is have to approved. open system preferences. Give me one second. Okay, so what? while you, while you do that, I want to add something. I think like with the with the man with the shredded abs, we, he, they could have added someone who is more famous to attract like social proof or some stuff. And Dom right. jo, to, Tom Bilyeu, I'm not sure. Wait, is it Tom Bilyeu? No, yeah. what is could ah oh, yeah Tom Bilyeu could have added I think his face into it for social recognition because people know him and they subscribe to him and they're more likely to know him <laughs> than their, than his guest. I think, well, it could be both, it could be both. I think it, it all depends on the guest. Like for example, like, I don't know who that guy is, uh, but when he had like a Tony Robbins or things like that, it, it makes sense. Um, but I, yeah, he, yeah, go for it. And he just keeps it very simple, big face. He does use his face in some, but I really feel that perhaps maybe two faces would be great as well. Like what you were saying, but he's a good yep. YouTuber. Um, he obviously wants to keep growing. So just type in what you want to do. Impulsive. See, impulsive is like what everybody's trying to do. The big over the yep. top face. This is what right, I'm contrast, right? Like this is what really sells to a younger audience. I would say 18 to 29, less than 30. This is great, right? People love it. The YouTube faces work. Um, I really like a seals. He keeps it simple in the text. He makes himself pop from the background, shows off the, the abs. 
This? Uh, yeah, that one is good. He also makes content where it's like, I'm going to eat like Conor McGregor. And then he has Conor McGregor in the thumbnail in shape with the meals. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So there's your social proof, human trust, things like that. Um, sports people all kind of keep into the same splits, big text, and showing the, the athlete. Uh, I like Air Rack. If you want to go to Air Rack's thumbnails, he's using, he's basically, all these people kind of just copy what works. Yeah, Air Rack, he blew up. Yeah, he has, he got over a million, he got over in like less than a year. He got this size, right? So you can see that is a great thumbnail, right? And Mr. Beast has gone on the record and said, I would spend $10,000 on a thumbnail because that, that, it, that's how much it matters. Um, as you can see, he actually piggybacks off Mr. Beast. He uses the same kind of style. Not a lot of text. Can, right. can you zoom in a little bit more? Let me get you. Boom, boom, boom. Right? So Great. he keeps it very simple. Call to action in the, in the banner, right? New videos every Monday. So, you know, every Monday he's coming out with a video. Um, I survived the world. Like, verses are very popular, right? Uh, the here's what happened title model is very popular for people who are just I just blank, blank, blank. Here's what happened. V blank versus blank. Um, and if you download my free guide, you, you, get you get the top 10 templates of what people are using in 2022. Uh, most popular videos and what are the top creators are using. So I'll give you a link to that where you can put it up on your podcast. Make sure everybody go download my free guide so you can get a little thumb title structure going on. Um, and those are just basically shorts, right? He hasn't uploaded a short. Oh, that's a shorts channel. So this is the, the controversy. Uh, I don't know if it's a controversy, Curie, is that the biggest creators are putting shorts on a completely different channel. Marcus Brownlee, Mr. Beast, Air Rack, right? They're going against what Google is telling me, right? But that is what seems to be working because I kind of agree that they're two different viewers. And this is where we go back to massaging there them into two the- industries that massaging them into the long form, right? Two minute videos, things like that. Um, so I really have to talk to the, to my person at YouTube again. It's because the big guys are doing it separate. I had another creator who wants to do it separate because they don't mix, right? Or they want to have two different, um, this gets deeper into like brand partnerships and sponsorships and things like that. You're able to go to a company and be like, you want short form? Bang, you're going to do bang, bang, bang. You want long form? It's going to be here. Right, so it just, it varies. Do I paste? Okay, here. Yeah. There you go. So Jack Gordon. And Gary V. Gary V posts on the same page. He puts everything on one page, right? There must be a reason. Yeah, so as we can see, he do, he's doing that. And he Why has... Why though? Like, there's, so, there's like, well, there's big people who have like different opinions on this stuff. It's, it's split down the middle from what I, from what I experienced and create, and, and even with creators, right. But I'm sure he has, Gary Vee has 4 million. I'm sure he has a YouTube con a partner manager, right. People at that size have a, have a person they talk to once a month at YouTube. And I'm sure he's saying the same thing. It's like, put it all on one channel, get the both types of traffic. Um, the argument that Jimmy has is that it, it, it splits your viewer. You, you know, views are great. But it's about the type there of view. There are two industries that color. Right? Like, I can get you a million views tomorrow. Give me $10,000 and I'll go buy you some views from some, some kids in the Middle East or Bangladesh. No offense. Right? Not Vietnam. Not high quality views. You want to get the right type of views and the right type of viewers to really grow your channel, make more ad revenue, ignore the police. I live in Los Angeles, so there's always a lot of police and ambulances running by in LA. You want to get the right type of viewer, the right quality of view. Right, and that's where the, the the debates are. So as we can see, there are two channels who are, who are doing, this channel is doing it on both, right? But it's two different feeds. And you gotta see, does the person who subscribes to the channel gonna watch the 13 minute video about deleting TikTok before it ruins your life, right? That's the real debate. Or TikTok is eating YouTube alive. Man, that's, that's actually up for debate as well. Not in terms of monetization, but man, TikTok is just really crushing it. TikTok is now the title sponsor for, uh, for the, uh, for uh, what you call VidCon, right? VidCon is the biggest video creator convention in America, right? Well, they have one overseas. They're putting, they're doing one in Madrid this year at the end of the year. They had a VidCon London, uh, got postponed and they do one in Mexico City. 
which is great. And they have one in the Middle East, which I don't know. I'm, I'm sure is Abu Dhabi the closest to you or is London or Madrid? What is closest to you? I think it's Abu Dhabi because I'm close to Turkey and Cyprus. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. to the UK, it's one and a half hours for me to go. So I'm guessing Abu Dhabi is like, I think it's the same stuff. I think it's the same hours, if not more. So I would tell you, I would probably see you in December then for the VidCon Abu Dhabi, right? Because they really want, we all know the middle, the MENA, Middle East and Asia is a big pocket for creators. Nas Daily just did their convention in Abu Dhabi as well. So the, for their creator summit or whatever. So it seems like companies, creators, brands, they see opportunity in the Middle East. And, in, and all that other area. So I expect a lot more creators. And quite frankly, it's a very, uh, you know, they got a lot of money out there in Abu Dhabi in the Middle East. So they're, they want to do it. Brands, creators, they're willing to invest and make dope content. Obviously, there's a ton of finance and crypto people out there uh, avoiding taxes. Pro tip, you don't want to pay taxes, go move to Abu Dhabi and Dubai and all those other places. Um, but yeah, back to what you were saying, this channel is mixing it together and it breaks it up like this. But there's the debate, right? No continuity. Like, how do we convert that viewer? Or if you're making long form and you built a channel, look, this guy probably has, what, 200,000. Scroll back up. 200,000, maybe. 225, if I remember. 225. Can you click videos and see, like, what the how long he's been doing it for? So he's just, so what is it? Three, four, five, six. Six out of the last eight have been shorts. Seven out of the last ten. Um, and see, he used Mr. Beast's name in the thing it gets a lot of views um but he really built out his channel with long form content give or take now his long form content isn't 20 minutes right maybe one of them is 15 there's 11 but mostly most of the things are like four to eight it seems like but um that's going to be the difficulty like you said it's like how do we really build a channel that has you know and it seems like he's blowing up his subscriber base through shorts so he may be one of those guys that's like you know what i'm just gonna all go all in on shorts it's really helped my channel um, because he hasn't uploaded a long form video. What two long form videos in the past month, give or take um, more. And, uh, but that one went really popular. Cause why, why do you think that one went, why do you think that one got 1.1 million views? Cause the whole video is about Jimmy. So it's like trend jacking right there. My point earlier, spotting people who, what videos you like, who's popular in your niche. It, whether it could be, I'm going to say for somebody who's cooking, could be Tasty or Natasha's Kitchen or Sam the Cooking Guy. If it's somebody in gaming and you play Roblox, go look at the top five people in Roblox. If you're a gamer, Kiri, play Roblox because that, that, that game gets so many views. Uh, and obviously Minecraft is a mainstay. But um, see, I think that's a great thumbnail. Like scroll down the Apple effect. I think that's a great thumbnail. In my opinion, maybe it could use some text. I think a little more down. Uh, scroll down a little more, scroll down a little more right there. The apple effect, right, right there. Third video. I think that's a great thumbnail. Why did it not get a lot of views? I'm not sure. Maybe it got a lot of views for the size of the channel at the time, but I feel like that's a good, maybe they could have used more text. Maybe they could have had something more contrasty with Tim Cook. Uh, cause he does, he's not like over the top, right? Maybe a little white outline. There's some stuff you could have done, but I think in theory, that's a pretty solid thumbnail. Yeah, I think what's missing with his thumbnail and title is the clarity what the video is about. What is the app yeah. effect? Like, it's too vague. Yes, it mm. gets you interested, but it's too vague with, like, the combination of both. Like, what exactly is it? Because if you right. go here, that, like, if you go to his more Now he gets videos, a little better with it. Now he's getting a combination better combination of, like, yeah. hey, I figured out the Instagram algorithm, and it shows, like, millions of views, and why? Big like, proof this, of concept, curiosity. Very great point, right? Very good point. Brightness in the background to really draw the viewer in. Um, yeah, great points. Great points. I, I, I think that this guy is underrated, Alex, because if you see his editing, I'm not sure. Can we show editing without getting copyrighted? Yeah, let's be careful with that. But let's look at the one with The Rock, right? Like Where he photoshopped it? him and The Rock together. Oh. Proof of concept with 3.1 million likes. What is he really doing? So we aren't going to talk about Drake in the bed. Uh, what's Marco is Brownlee doing in the background? He is, he, he, he's doing a lot of trend jacking. Social media Pause. bakery. He's doing a lot of trend jacking, right? Look at his background. Has all the most popular creators in the world. KSI, Mr. Beast, Dream, uh, all those guys, right? 
He also began the video with tweets and stuff from Marcus Brownlee and other creators. The editing is phenomenal. It's amazing. Right? It's amazing. This, this is, is, what this I'm is telling how you, so... if you're a young creator, <sighs> you need to watch how this guy edits videos. There's no gaps. There's always something going on on the screen. I'm sure his retention is through the roof. This is, this is how you edit for a young audience on YouTube. Now, if somebody's 35 and older, it may be a little too much, right? But if, you're, if, you, if you want to cater to the 13 to, 30, to, to 34, this is great. Text on screen, fast jump cuts, graphics, everything keeps popping up. Boom. This is phenomenal. I would recommend people to watch him to edit for younger content. Now, I would yes. love to look at his analytics. Let's scroll yeah. down a little bit because we have vidIQ. Uh, attached to the channel and we like to see that this guy does not really focus on tags right he's all in on what we talked about right thumbnail title great video concept trend jacking right basically all the stuff you get on my free guide in case you forget 10 and a half million views in the past 30 days right phenomenal no channel tags this guy is literally shooting from the hip right so he's not really tightening up he's not really maximizing the channel because right youtube uses channel tags to index your channel right could he have better success on his non-trendy videos i believe so right uh his description doesn't really tell what the video is about and youtube's ai scans the description the top three lines they use that to to help recommend that video and that is directly from youtube right they you they read the description obviously and look i want to go back to that that guy had a counter Go back, go back on that. That is so massive. I, I, and you know, if you're doing uh, giveaways or challenges, let me, like, can I, do I have control as well? Yes, Hold on. yes, 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 you have. That. You see that in the, t in the bottom left, you can see in the bottom left, he has a tracker, he has a tracker. People get attached to that shit. Sorry, people get attached to that. Yes. Right, and, and, that, and this is what I was telling one of my creators who was, we're going to give out a thousand roses on Valentine's Day. I said, you got to have a tracker because people want to know and they want to scrub. Maybe people just want to see the last rows. People, but that keeps people engaged. There's always something on screen engaging the audience. It doesn't even have to be him on screen. It, whether it's a graphic, B-roll, there's always something going on on the screen. It comes in, bang, boom, right? There, there's just always something. I don't know if he edits his videos or if he hires Hilly or Smith or something, but or he watches a lot of Patty Galloway, shout out to Patty Galloway. He knows, he realizes, okay, cool. Let me, let me just take what I'm learning, what the big guys are doing, right? What Dream and all these other people who are breaking the algorithm essentially, right? Because these are videos that break the algorithm. These type of content, right? Like if we go look at Air Rack, who has 4 million subscribers with only 100 plus videos, he does a little more trend jacking, right? But this is the style of content that really hits. Right, like if I wanted to launch a YouTube channel, which I do, I have a shorts channel, but that's all dedicated to how to structure your title, how to add a plate, like very like, you know, for a beginning YouTuber events, you know, things like that. If I want to just make challenges and skits, this is the, this is the, this is the blueprint right here. You go through this and obviously we have our expertise and our strategy to go through behind the scenes and tighten up the description here and boom, 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 boom. But from a pure content perspective and thumbnail perspective, I would mess with the titles a little more. Personally, I think there's a little more meat on the bone we can do with the titles. Um, and that's where he's really um, not, I don't know if missing out is the word, but that's where he can really do stuff. I, I throw chapter markers in there as well, because it helps with search and people who want to click around and people clicking around on the video increases engagement, right? Because it shows that people are active on the video. They're not just playing it in the background. Um, but yeah, like, and like you said, those little recommendations on thumbnails, that little tweak will throw it over the top. The title, that'll throw it. It seems like his video ideas are great. His editing is great, right? The content is covered. Now it's all about tightening up the screws, adding gas to the fire kind of situation. But I agree, he is underrated. Um, but he, he has grown probably. In a, if we go to Social Blade and type in Jack Gordon, I'm sure we're going to see a direct correlation and see when his subscriber base blew up, right? So if we go to socialblade.com, let me just take, I'll make a new tab. We'll give this guy some, uh, let's go to the, let's just pick, uh, and let's type in Jack. This is actually a channel I worked with, uh, helped them get funding. So they just got four and a half million US dollars and a startup. So, and once again, are they crushing the bank with views? No, they're getting the right type of views for what they want funded, right? So that, that's what matters more. It's the quality of view. Jack Gordon, right? So this is the guy right here. Love the banner. 
So 9.2. So this is giving me a different number than VidIQ. Who's gonna who's gonna win out, right? But if we look at the if we look at the subscriber gains, nothing really, right? So he started back in January 2019, right? All the way through. We can probably add it up. We can probably do the math on this. He's not getting more than 100 subscribers a month. 50 out there. He started picking up. So he probably didn't touch a thousand subscribers until this month. So we can see what did he put up in January of 20 or in December of 2020, January of 2021, right? And then that's where things took off June of 2021 because he started using trends um, and things like that. And then he really shot back out of a cannon e this year, right? All probably through shorts, right? I'm going to, I'm going to just guess that this is all coming mainly from shorts because um, he's not getting a bunch of traffic on his older content. If we look at the video views, it's all short. I'm assuming it's all shorts. It got to be. And then five million. Yeah, years. I think it's the Mr. Beast fake commenter stuff. 100%. Right. So that's basically coming from what we talked about trend spotting, trend jacking, what's popular in your niche. Does it suck? Is it kind of lame? I don't know. It's either here nor there. Right. Everybody wants to grow and discover. You could even go on Twitter. Right. And you could look at these experts who are breaking down thumbnails or breaking down whatever, or they're talking about strategy. They're all piggybacking off bigger names. Right. So it's, it's what you have to do a little bit in the space to get your start. Air Rack did the same thing. We could also go back to Air Rack, who has just really blown up. He's, he, uh, he, he, he really followed. He even does it with the thumbnails because there was a big popular thing on YouTube where everybody was just wearing orange jumpsuits for at least a month. Right. And he copied that. And he made it work and things like that. But 100 dates in 24 hours, that was an idea taken from a really popular trendy video. And they just worked with it, right? It, what all Eric also does is, this is a pro tip. He has a thumbnail from when the video is launched. And then he changed the thumbnail for, for returning viewers, right? So, well, sorry, vice versa. And I'm sorry if we're going over on your time, Kiri. But the, uh, he, when a video launches, he has a specific thumbnail. Because he knows the, uh, his, current, his main audience is going to watch it first. His goal is to help get that pushed into the recommended then he changes the thumbnail to have it be more recommended. It's a very interesting strategy he implores. See, orange jumpsuit, orange jumpsuit. Uh, people using a lot of bright colors. He uses a lot of bright colors, a lot of contrast, right? A lot of saturation. You can see his face clearly. And this guy is really just um, David Dobrik, Jake Paul, you know, Mr. Beast Burger, Bill Gates. Right. It's uh, he, he, uh, he uses a very simple, I became, I did, I survived, right. Putting into context, he builds that human trust. Uh, his stuff is heavily Photoshopped, but Hey, I want to at least watch it and click on the video. Right. So day number one. Um, yeah, but you can tell every video he's put up a lot of thought, a lot of preparation, right. He doesn't just put up content right now. He came in with a mission and like, I'm just going to do everybody's I'm going to just do high level strategy. I'm sure he has consultants on deck as well. Even the biggest creators in the world, even Jimmy has a retention specialist, a consultant for certain things. Um, and I say, Jimmy, I say, Mr. Beast, like when you're at this size, you need a bunch, you need more people at the dinner table to really talk to you and figure things out. Right. So he really piggybacked on Jake Paul, as we can see Jake Paul and David Dobrik, and then really do dove into uh, Mr. Beast. Um, but yeah, I would say every other, every, every three videos, it's piggybacking off of somebody trend spotting, trend jacking, uh, using other people's names. Um, and it's, it's, uh, yeah. Although that short with Mr. Beast locked me in a freezer, didn't really take off probably what he probably did, but 834 K in two days is phenomenal. Um, where's the video, Mr. Beast? Oh, row, locked me in the freezer. Row. Okay. Yeah. So as you can see, he is doing shorts on the same channel as well, right? So, and Air, I went to one of Airac's conferences, not con it was Vid Summit, what, large, large creator thing. He did a presentation. He talked about idea, thumbnail, basically what I'm telling you, what I've been talking about this whole video. Um, and he's always changing things. He's always mixing around with thumbnails, mixing around with titles. So um, it's great, you know, ra racing 38 miles across ice. That's pretty cool, I guess, because um, because that doesn't even look real. Like that motorbike to me doesn't even look real. Mile thirty four, just to show, like, oh, we're in the middle of the thirty eight thing, right? It's proof. I don't see his face as much. The focus is really the bike, 
in that in that thumbnail. So that's a real interesting choice. Um, so yeah, and uh, obviously that I have a stalker video. That's a picture. That's a guy from from a famous from the Office in the United States, right? A very famous show in America. So he has him on the thumbnail, right? Mr. Beast is in the thumbnail for the short. Had to get into the Super Bowl for free. Sneaking into Super Bowl 2022. Scroll down a little bit. Let me see how those numbers did. I'm interested to see. Boom. 12 million and 6 million, right? Super Bowl. You don't even watch American football probably, but you know what the Super Bowl is, right? The Super Bowl is arguably one of the biggest events globally. You know, it's the only time that a lot of people, uh, a lot of my friends who don't, that's the only American football game they'll watch for the whole year, right? Over here, it's like a national holiday. You're drinking, you're eating, you're partying, and the game is just there. It's just a reason to have a TV on the screen, right? So, but um, yeah, this is, uh, this guy has got the blueprint, right? To get to millions of subscribers. This is how you want to cut the curve. Study this channel. Because basically yeah. everything we've said in this conversation, mm -hmm. he applied. And then some. And then what we talked yeah. about, next level stuff. Tightening their retention. Going through the metrics. Like what you would really need a consultant for. There are for. two industries that call their customers. He, he, he's on the same, he does the, he's on the same track, right? He just doesn't do as much trend yet. He doesn't upload as volume as well. Maybe I think the volume's a little more different on. So he, like, I think we can both agree for Jack Gordon. His editing is amazing. His effort is amazing for the growth for the time he has been on the platform. It's yes. amazing. I think the next step from here is doubling down, not doubling down, going all in on his content ideas. Like yes. if he posts less frequently on his long form, and like making sure that the idea is like top level stuff, then yes. I'm sure he can get, he can jump this from 200,000 to like 5 million. I'm sure because Easily. his editing and his scripts is really good, Alex. That's, and that's usually the opposite, right, Kiri? Usually the, 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 the quality of yeah. production, the audio, the video, the lighting, that's usually like what people's final steps are. He's got that already. Yeah. Now it's about, video research ideas, finding trends for them, like things like what we do for clients or what I do for some of my clients, right? Topic research, video ideas, what's trending from the, the collaborators in the niche, right? Thumbnails uh, and the title, right? Where he can really kind of just tighten up. Cause, cause this guy I believe is a creator at heart. And we know people like that who are just great at creating but they don't really understand the business and analytics side, right? I'm sure he has enough to kind of look at the, uh, to look at the metrics and stuff. But I, I don't even really think he's looking at that. I just think he looks at what's popular, what's trending, and I'm going to edit like that. And I'm just going to make sure that I have no gaps in my videos. Yeah, so I see, I, I'm just ass assuming here, but I think he just loves creating so much that he doesn't yes. have the patience to um, take it more slow. And he wants to yes. publish a video because he, I think he's a bit tied into the numbers and the metrics and he just wants the social proof because he thinks he's fading away. I'm just assuming here. And I think back to your point, he's just, he loves creating so much. He doesn't have like the little bit extra patience to put like that extra week or two weeks of effort. He just blew up, right? So clearly there's something, I guess, I don't know what happened in June of last year either. He got 34K, but probably a trend jacking. But look, he has recent success, right? So he doesn't really know. He was He's been doing the same back end op stuff as he was doing here right it hasn't changed so could we come in well we could probably edit this out we should probably reach out to him but um he needs definitely you know some tightening up as a whole now i don't know if airac does any of that stuff because he just launched a channel so let's just see if airac does any of the any of this the is one of the longest He's tr this is trending number two right so that's amazing right so two minutes so i guess it's, it, it's a i thought that I mean, like, he did this idea, like, two times. Why third time? Let's see what's trending in America right now. The only thing that's trending more is Kylie Jenner's pregnancy video. <laughs> so Kelly Clarkson, Creators on the Rise, Kamira's Kitchen. Ooh, that actually, that looks good as hell, though. Like, I, th I can hey, man, see why. Ca oh, yeah. Oh, can we talk about why? why 8, 8 views, yeah. it gets a creator on the rise. Like, I have a cooking creator who gets 100,000 views a video. Like, why isn't she a creator on the rise? Matthew Beam, he crushes it as well. Same type of thing, right? Over the top face, really cartoony. And as you can see, this guy's doing the sneaking into Mr. Beast's house. Well, how many how many subscribers does this guy have? He's doing. They're all they're all doing the same thing. He has how many? As it lets it load, six million. Like, and as we can see, all these these group of eight ten guys, they're all doing the same thing, literally. And his thumbnails are good. Me. 
arrows. I like his thumbnails more than Jack's. Um, but we don't know about the con and he's actually putting out 15 minute videos. So, you know, he's racking up that sub he's racking up that monetization, same type of shit, same type of videos. Uh, does he mess with tags at all? A little bit, but nothing too crazy, but he does put in good tags sneaking into Mr. Beast, blah, blah, blah. He has his things over here. Um, is his description on point? Mr. Beast pinned it. So that helps. So this guy, so once again, he put in, he, he actually put in a description, which is very smart, right? Which is what we talked about. So he's doing little things here and there, but we all know that the thumbnail, these are all just, and I feel like this guy's part of Mr. Beast's compound where he's just growing out his creator network in North Carolina. But these are, this is another good channel to look at thumbnail wise. Trending, Kelly Clarkson, things like that. Colin Furs, Death Diving. Devonte Adams, you don't know who this is, but this was a big deal in America. It's a, it was a transfer, like a, like a football transfer, and it kind of shocked the world a little bit. Um, but yeah, this is just trending now. We can see in gaming and things like that. Fortnite, mm -hmm. Minecraft, Roblox. But once again, we see that the most popular creators are making a specific type of video, a specific type of thumbnail, and that just goes back into trend spotting, trend jacking, right? And Jack has now sees that he's editing his videos like that. And he, he's reaping the rewards right now. Yeah. I think for the food video that we have seen, I'm not sure if they're using color grading, but I'm, I'm confident. I'm not quite sure, but it's just a theory that if they use like color grading in their food videos, it will make them like more appealing and increase a click through rate. Yeah. And it also depends because this is a little dark, but I can, the thing is, what she's doing well is, and I think this is why they're featuring her, featuring her, is that it's very clear. I can tell from the video, from the photo, what it is. I don't have to guess what it is. In the, in the, I don't have, you know what I'm saying? So let's go here, 35K. She's doing, I can just tell right away what she's making, right? And she only uploads, she's been uploading more frequently. Uh, wow, so she's blowing up a half a million views, right, in the past 30 days. That's great. Um, let's go to her most popular videos if we can, Kiri, because I'm sure it's probably one or two videos that are carrying the load. Um, even though her soul food mac and cheese did well. Oh, look at that cornbread. Uh, so she has three videos in the six figures, right? But people love bread. People love, you know, soul food. So that makes sense. So she's crushing it when it comes to that most jiffy cornbread hack ever. She uses a trend, right? She stacked a trend right? Because people love making Jiffy cornbread, um, especially during holidays and just in general, right? And people want to make it easier. So you save time, you have a taste of the same. So she's trend stacking. So that's very good. It is very interesting. Channel is very well laid out. I want to say that as well. Like in terms of best practices, her video is very laid out, is laid out great. If I just came out upon her channel, I, if, it's really easy for me to find something. Hey man, I'm not gonna lie, it makes me hungry. Dude, I'm on, a, I'm on a fast right now and I'm like, I just wanna crush it right now. It looks amazing, the food Bro, looks great. It looks like I wanna eat it. Wings, man, those chicken wings. So she's crushing it right now. I think I, in terms of like aesthetics, like I don't know how her tags and her description are, right? Like let's click her most recent video. Let's see what her most recent video is. Uh, the Big Zitty. Let's see her intro. Let's see the, the level of edit, editing she's put it in. Right. She has something like, I don't know what she's doing here. Hey y'all, welcome to Camara's Kitchen. Today I'm gonna show you how- So to she has a stock intro. So the editing is very amateur. We can tell right away, right? It's very her. It's just probably her who's editing the videos. She took that title. She took that uh, intro card from Tasty. Um, oh, I love that. A nice pull. She's showing the full product. So good intro. People want to see, especially when people oh, want to. Frick. Yeah, the quality is dog shit right now, maybe because the internet. But the the those those cuts aren't the best. But her format is really good. Showing the full product in the beginning, right? This is what I would tell a cooking creator. Let me just connect my laptop real quick before it dies. Got to connect my charger. Um, and I think until you do that, it's back to your point. It is appealing to her target audience, which is all the like 
mothers like 40 years old, 35 years old yes. and older and stuff. So this is what they want to see. They, they, they want to see the names of the products. They want to see the end results, how it's looking. Yeah. They, yes. we don't, it's not for teenagers that are just, no. are just hungry this or on a diet and they want to see some and older. stuff to make them hungry. This is moms and grandmas who want to cook for their family or whatever, right? That's why the cornbread one did so well. But key thing she did, she showed the full product in the beginning, right? She didn't save it to the end. She showed it in the beginning. She broke into it. Um, for me, I would probably have more on text, on screen text, kind of just saying like, this is what happened, blah, blah, blah. Um, and kind of keep it moving. So you encourage people to pause the video and things like that. Um, she has her other recipes, business inquiries, things like that. I, you know, it looks appealing. I like her camera angle. Um, I probably would have showed it a little different than that, but, um, there's a couple of dead spots in the video, right? There's a couple of spots where it's just kind of like going on and on. So, but I like her format in theory. Like I get why she's a creator on the rise. It's like full product ingredients, cooking it. And then I'm, hopefully she does a taste test at the end because people love to see a reaction of when people trying the food, right? That's a make or break for some people. Like, is it good? Like, I, I, why am I going to make it if it doesn't taste good? So she pulls it out and then she just shows finished product. So she takes a piece out. Oh, I think she's just going to plate it. That's which appealing. Which is hard as well. Because people want to see how it would look on a plate. Wow. And what I tell, I have a couple of cooking people who I've worked with. It's like, put it on a nice white plate, right? Don't make the plate too big. Make it look appetizing as if it's going to be served to you. So she does mm -hmm. that. Very smart. I like this. Um, but it looks like she's just going to cut away from it. Yeah. So I love the falling off. She shows it again. She doesn't need to show it again. Um, uh, but, and then she shows a full piece again. So yeah, she doesn't do the taste testing. Um, so that's probably something I would add, but all in all, I think, I think in terms of, it looks like it's just her like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come on. Anything that's creamy, cheesy, gooey, like she's showing the full plate, right? This girl's making four different things in the video. This one around. Alex, what? we missed the most important part. Having her what videos in a playlist to increase the the people's like very smart. watching yeah, other that's what videos. We talked, about. we talked about she has it very well organized, right? She has everything in a playlist. So you're always going to be watching more and more things. Um, she's encouraging people to 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 watch more videos, which is great. Now I didn't hear her call to action, but focusing on giving options for videos is very smart. Don't just say make sure to like and subscribe, guys, and share. No, no, no. In your end of the video, you should say, if you like this video, watch this one and this one. Because you want to get people to become returning viewers at the end of the day, right? You want you want that uh, uh, for a healthy YouTube channel. You're obviously going to make videos to get in wide traffic, but you want the recurring audience. Yeah. I think she's using a, ver a better call to action where, like, if people do nothing, then they will automatically go to another video of hers, like in the playlist. So that's very smart. I think this is why, like, YouTube is recommending her. She may be not the best in like taking shots and stuff or like mm -hmm. explaining stuff or like the video, the video editing stuff, but it's like simple and effective. Yeah. She's doing everything that they would tell a creator to do, right? Like she is like a role, role model for what a new creator or an aspiring creator. This is why I think she got featured. Oh, cool. She's doing this properly. She's st she, she, the video is good. Uh, is the title long? Maybe, but she's using a lot of keywords. Does she put hashtags? No, but that's not the most important. She's got great playlist, playlist strategy. The content is good. Can it be improved? Yes. But the bake, the, the, the real like basic of the, ch of the chant of the video strategy is great. Obviously she doesn't know. Now, obviously she probably doesn't look at her analytics like that. Right. Cause at the end of the day, she's a cook, right? She's not an analytics nerd or uh, over the top, right? Like, like us. So I think she's doing phenomenal. I'm going to scroll down. Does she do, does she put some tags? She puts a couple tags. She has good, uh, she has good channel tags. She could, could she stuff this a little more? Probably. Um, but she, big thing, she replies to everybody in her community. This is what a lot of creators don't do is they don't build their community. Whether you have three people commenting or 300, you should always involve your community, reply to them. And, and that's a big thing, right? So she's she, good description, right? Fills, puts at least her three lines, replies in the community. She's doing everything. Like if I made a checklist book, she's doing most of the stuff that I want community. Let's see if she's active in her community posts as we let it load. Hopefully 
No. Yeah, okay. so I think that the reason why he's she's replying to basically I don't know if it's if it's all, but to a significant portion of the her audience is because she doesn't she doesn't detach from the fact that there are actual people watching the video. Yes. We're we're detaching from it and they're saying, Oh, uh, 10 people comment on comment on our on our video. And we say, but well, that's a little. But she's saying it's 10 people, actual people watching my videos. That's crazy. I'm gonna reply to every single one of them. That's right. so crazy. That they're watching face. my videos and then they're gonna cook the kids good food and all the cute all the cute stuff. She's not detaching from it. Right. Let me go back here. I don't want to want one of these short unlike videos. So the whole thing went to shit. The internet has gone to shit. All right, there we go. Uh, Kamira's kitchen. No, let it load. Let it load. Also, I just want to say I don't. And once again, the thumbnails look delicious, right? The thumbnails look delicious. Could they? Could they be a little more contrasty? Could she throw some text on the screen on the page? Probably. But she takes a really, this one, she just, she puts, this one, she's improving. She put text on the screen, right? So she's leveling up with every video, which is what we tell new creators, right? Try to add something new every round of videos. Keep improving, keep improving. The fucking photos look unreal. I mean, because she brightened them up, probably. But I want to eat all that, right? She's got me. That's the whole point. Simple thump, simple made in Canva, right? She made this in Canva, probably. Uploaded it. Not real active in the, in the, in the feed. Hasn't up that hasn't done anything in six months. I'll just mark it. Um, and then she's making on a cookbook. So she has a plan, right? She's not just she's using this to 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 to, to promote a cookbook, which is very smart, right? Multiple sources of revenue, building out your brand. So this is she she's got it. She's very smart. She's very sharp business-wise. Uh video-wise are great. The thumbnails are good. Can we could I come in and help her out on a consulting? Probably. Right. Little things, little things to tighten up description tags, whatever, whatever. Right. Maybe some things for the thumbnail, things for the title to build more intrigue. But as a, as a creator, who's probably doing it all on her own, who is a chef at heart, right? Not a YouTuber. She's a chef at heart, a cook who makes good food. Phenomenal. I mean, she couldn't be, I couldn't be, she shouldn't, she should be so proud because this is, this is, this is what most creators are going to go through it, right? They're not going to really know about analytics and, and things and back and forth and kind of tightening up and go over the top on the editing. She does what she can. She puts out a video every week, consistent, right? Makes good food. It looks good. And she replies to everybody in her community. You got to respect it. Yeah, man, I agree with you. I think I just totally agree with you. She's doing everything perfect. And I think she's going to get huge commercial rates and make bank with like her e-cookbook e right now. Right. It, like people see her like, ah, it's only 35,000 subscribers. But man, once she releases her e-cookbook and she charges like, I don't know, $10 a month subscription fee, let's say, and she keeps updating her recipes, she's going to get like huge commercial rates. Do you have any estimates in mind of like percentages of on her conversion rates? I'm going to go with, I don't know. What are you going to go with? Let me think. I have no idea. But th we, we, this is once again talking about the quality of viewer, right? Like she's getting the views she wants. She doesn't care. It, she wants people who are going to want to get that cookbook, right? She's getting the target audience, which is what matters most. I'm trying to find a graphic here because I need to, I want to I'm read saying off. three to 5%. Conversion I would say rates. so. I'm, I'm, she seems like she has a hardcore audience, right? So she, ha how many uploads does she have? Do we know? Let's see, video wise. Let's say, let's really say ten thousand per video. No, I want to see like how many view. Like, if we go to back to Social Blade, and we go to we go to Kamira's Kitchen, she has one hundred and thirty one uploads and thirty five thousand subscribers. Do you understand how phenomenal that is for the average? This is why she's on the rise. Okay, the average number of uploads for a creator that has a, a thousand to five thousand subscribers is 134, right? Let's just let, this is based off of TubeBuddy and all this other stuff, right? So, a channel that has 10,000 subscribers on average has about 300 uploads, right? So, she's crushing those metrics, right? It's it's average years, and obviously the average years to see are like seven, eight, nine, ten years, right? She's crushing it, right? Alex. She, people, are, people are frustrated. She's crushing it. Yes, 400,000 views in the last 30 days with 3% conversion rate. It's 12,000 people. Let's say 5,000 people. Let's say 1%. Her... 
right? Because that's the marketing in America. Let's just say 1% of people convert. 4,000 people. 4,000 people. Buy $10 per month for her ebook. Let's even say 400 people. Subscribe $10 that's, a month. That's $40,000 per month, Alex. Even on the low end, let's just say only 400 people. At 10 bucks, is 4,000 a month, right? That's $50,000 a year. That covers no all her expenses. And you're not even talking about the people who will go off and buy the cookbooks or people who I say her merchandise aprons or people who want to get her and just talk to her on a consultation. Like I'm, I need help cooking this recipe. Can I just talk to you for an hour? Right? Like there's so many different things and it can see like she was working on a couple of things here and then she's great. She's gradually naturally increasing, right? This is what people want to see. Naturally the views are increasing. The sub growth is increasing. She's on a healthy growth path right now. Right? I can't wait to see her in another 12 months. It's going to be, she'll definitely hit a hundred thousand. She keeps this up. She's, she's on a, she's on a rise. Now I see why she's trending. Phenomenal stuff. I hope she's she going to make half a million, dollars. half a million dollars per year in revenue with, with her ebook with 1% conversion rate. Yeah. If she sells it for 10 bucks, one off, right. Or what I would say is you build a subscription, right? You, that way she yep. gets, they get four new recipes a month. They get one new recipe a week and they get subscribed to this newsletter and they get one new recipe a week. They just pay nine ninety nine a month. And you have recurring revenue, which is easy because for me or somebody like that, oh, I'll pay 10 bucks a month. That way I get exclusive recipes and I get maybe more breakdowns. Maybe not only am I watching the videos on YouTube, but maybe she goes more in depth on this $10 a month newsletter, whatever, right? On top of exclusive recipes, right? So it, there's just so many ways to go about it. That's why I always say build your audience. And maybe this is why YouTube is saying use shorts and long form hybrid, right? Because it's proven that shorts build your subscriber base rather quickly right? Uh, again, versus a long form, right? So discoverability and audience growth. And then the breast is history, right? It's much easier to throw gas on the fire when you have an audience, right? And I can come in and consult and talk about revenue opportunities and building stuff out, whether it's for a cooking girl, aprons, subscriptions, eBooks, uh, consultations, uh, calls, whatever, or a gamer who wants to do a masterclass. Yeah. I mean, Ninja just did a masterclass, how to become a streamer. I'm sure a ton of people mm -hmm. paid to whatever the what whatever it was going to be and are watching them how to stream could a joke could a, could another person do it yeah but it's it's a ninja right it, there's it's all the information's out there it's how you package it and sell it right yeah agreed yeah crazy she's making me hungry yeah man i'm definitely gonna have to eat after this call we've extort we've we've exerted a lot of energy yeah. What, when is your fast breaking? Let's see. I'll tell you right now. I am currently at 21 hours now. So I'm on a 21 hour fast right now. So when I do you will finish right after this. Huh? When do you finish? Right after this? Probably. My goal is 20 hours. So I'm already at 21. So I will, okay. uh, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll cook something good up here and then I'll just get back to my afternoon work. And then uh, keep on keeping on. But yeah, this is a little extreme, but I feel, I feel good just doing it. I feel best when I do a four-hour window. And then I try to time it that way when I sleep, it covers a majority of the time. Hey, man, we got to close it up. My pizza is here. I'm not going to lie. Thank you guys for coming. Ooh. Alex, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, I wanted to go for longer. Hopefully, we can have you back uh, next year. Hopefully, this comes out soon. Send me, send me the link for your ebook. Amazing stuff. I'm sure people have enjoyed it. One of my favorite podcasts yet because I like going deep. You have provided with lots of value and good value because you know what you're speaking about. So I love people who provide all this good value. And that's about it. Anything else? Yeah, man. Uh, download my free ebook down below and you can always reach out to me. You'll put all my information down below, my social media handles if you want to get a little more in depth with me one-on-one -on -one or whatever, whatever. But yeah, all my links will be below. And uh, thank you again, Kiri. This is phenomenal. And it was a good times.